This is my 81 DeLorean, and this is a puddle of coolant. Why is the coolant on the floor instead of in the car? That's what I'm gonna find out. The leak itself is pretty easy to find. This part of the subframe was completely covered in coolant. There was active coolant drips from along this pipe. I thought at first it was these hoses that maybe they had deteriorated or the hose clamp wasn't tight, but the leak seemed to be coming from the middle, not from the ends. The cause of the problem is the fact that this pipe is sitting on top of the frame. That's not where it's supposed to go. I put it on top of the frame because I didn't remember how it was supposed to route. It's supposed to go under the frame and it's supposed to be a cushion clamp that connects it to this hole, but I didn't do that. So you give it a few years of vibration sitting on the frame and eventually it just wears a hole through the pipe. And then you have a leak. This poor routing is even worse than it looks. This hose is extremely close to the AC compressor. There is actually a nick in the hose from where it's touched the pulley. I am just lucky that this hasn't started leaking. And this shield is just completely destroyed by the compressor. All right, so I have to replace a leaking pipe and a hose that is about to fail. Now let's see how much coolant we get everywhere. No, oh, not much, I guess it all leaked out. Yep. It should just twist out. Okay. And there's the rest of the coolant. Okay. It would appear that I did not put the coolant bucket in the right place. All right, here's the pipe. And here is the groove that I wore into the pipe from letting it rest on top of the frame. Now, an interesting thing is that while resting on the frame, it would partially seal the leak. And when the coolant got warm enough, the metal would expand and completely seal the hole. This meant that I could drive around all day and there would be no hint of a leak under my car. I had to go home, turn the car off, and let it sit overnight before a puddle would show up. I actually went on a trip and I carried four bottles of coolant just in case I leaked out and I didn't need any of it. I wasn't originally gonna replace this pipe. I was just going to patch it with this stuff called Fiber Fix, which you probably saw on the pipe earlier. I didn't actually get around to testing it with coolant, but I'm fairly sure it would have worked because I've used this before to fix a hole in my transmission dipstick tube. In that case, I had not properly mounted it to the engine and it had sunk down and rubbed against the axle. This eventually wore a hole in it, but I wrapped it in fiber fix and it, the leak is gone. It's been running that way since I've done the repair. I should mention that this pipe is not the original pipe. This is the original pipe that DeLorean shipped with. It has a port for a gasket and what's called the Otterstat. The Otterstat is a temperature switch. It sits in the coolant stream and when it gets to 207 degrees Fahrenheit, it turns the cooling fans on. The problem is that this is how this pipe was installed from the factory. The otter stat in this configuration could be below the coolant level if you were a little low on coolant or you had air in your system. That would mean your cooling fans might not turn on if you were stuck in traffic and then the car would overheat. To work around this, people would install the pipe like this. The problem with this is that the only thing keeping the otter stat in the car is this fiddly clip that I personally don't feel comfortable trusting to keep my coolant in my car. In my case, the clip actually kept the otter stat in the car and didn't fail on me. What failed was this gasket. It developed a pinhole leak and sprayed coolant directly onto my exhaust manifolds. This flashed to steam and was immediately visible in my rear view mirror. I was able to get off the highway as quickly as possible, well before the engine temperature rose at all, no damage done to my engine or anything. But now I had to decide how I wanted to fix this. I could just put another gasket in, but I feel like that was just going to fail again. Now, conveniently, I do not need an Otterstat. I have an EFI conversion, and the EFI can run off the water pump temperature sensor to control the cooling fans. This means that a friend of a friend was able to make me this pipe. It doesn't have an autostat port. This worked great up until the point I ruined it. So the only problem now is I don't know how I can get another one of these made. And rather than spend the time trying to figure that out, I'd really like to get my car back on the road. So I took the easy way out and bought one of these. This is a new style Otterstat pipe available from some DeLorean vendors. It has a pre-installed screw-in Otterstat. This does not have the gasket and does not have that clip, so you don't have to worry about it failing if you mount it upside down. In my case, I don't actually need the Otterstat, but it'll be a glorified plug to keep the coolant in my car. But it will get me on the road quickly. So I'm going to put this in my car along with this water pump hose, these hose clamps, and these mounting brackets. So let's get to it. Much better. 
All right, that went pretty well, except for a few small hiccups. One was the hose clamps. These were too large for some reason. I replaced them with properly sized ones that were more robust, so those won't be coming off, so I should be good with that. The other problem was this mounting bracket. This goes over the water pump hose, but it's supposed to attach to the AC compressor. The problem is that mounting location doesn't exist on a three liter engine. In the stock 2.8 liter, there's a clear location to put this, but not in my car. So I have come to the conclusion that this is a superfluous part and is not necessary in a three liter engine. All the belts and poses clear everything. I'm not worried about having any problems. The other problem I did have though, was the location of the cushion clamp. There's a hole in the frame where the cushion clamp's supposed to mount, but when I use that, the pipe rubs against the frame. I'm back where I started. If I adjust it a little bit, then the hose rubs against the frame. Same problem. I don't want to trust anything rubbing against anything. So what I wound up doing was I made use of a second hole that is in the frame. It's a little further toward the back of the car and a little more toward the engine. I don't know why it's there. Maybe it's something with early cars, maybe some shop or previous owner made a modification, but whatever it is, it is perfect. The hoses and pipes all clear the belts. They clear the back of the car. They clear the frame. Everything's good. So that's where that lives now. And I looks like I'm all set. All I have to do is fill it with coolant and I can take it for a drive. Okay, so I've filled the car with coolant and now I just have to bleed air from the system. Normally you would turn a bleeder screw that's attached to the housing on the water pump to do this. You just wait for the bubbles to stop. But I'm lazy, so I got a self bleeder kit. You just attach this where the bleeder screw is and the other end of the hose goes into the coolant bottle and it just continuously bleeds any air from the system. There's nothing to do. So it's really just go for a drive, see how it runs and you know, bring an extra bottle of coolant just in case. Uh, there's a second bleed point up at the front of the car. Sometimes you can get some air trap there due to a local high point. The way you have to bleed this is you have to disconnect one of the small coolant hoses, wait for the scalding hot coolant to stop showing bubbles and then plug it back in. Usually you get burned doing this, it's not fun, but there's also a kit for that, which I've also installed that adds a valve to this hose. You just have to turn the valve, wait for the bubbles to stop and close it again. This is a lot easier than trying to pull that hose off and then trying to get it back on without burning yourself. Although the valve does get hot just from the coolant running past it. So you want to use something to protect your hands or a pair of pliers to turn the valve or something like that. But as for right now, I'm all set and good to go. I just need to button this up and I can take it for a drive.